الرحمن الرحيم أعزائي طلبة المرحلة الثالثة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته في هذه المحاضرة سنقدم تعريف للشاعر والناقد الفكتوري ماثيو أرنولد ثم قراءة وتحليل قصيدته بعنوان دوفر بيج Welcome dear students In this lecture we are going to give an introduction to the Victorian poet and literary critic Matthew Arnold and then a critical analysis of his poem entitled Dover Beach. Matthew Arnold Biography Matthew Arnold was born in Middlesex on December 1822. He began his career as a poet. He studied at Balliol College, Oxford University. After completing his study at Oxford, he returned to rugby as a teacher of classics. Arnold began to work as a government school inspector. Throughout his 35 years in this position, Arnold developed an interest in education, an interest which fed both his critical works and his poetry. Arnold became the first professor to lecture in English rather than Latin. During this time, Arnold wrote the well-known critical works, including Essays in Criticism in 1865 and Lecture on Anarchy in 1869, in which he sets for the ideas and reflects the prevailing values and attitudes of the Victorian age. Arnold is considered as the most modern poet of his time. He defines the modern in his first lecture as a professor of poetry at Oxford which is entitled On the Modern Element in Literature. In fact, this lecture marked his transition from a poet to social and literary critic. He argued that the great need of a modern age is an intellectual deliverance, preoccupation with arts of peace, the growth of tolerant spirits, the formation of taste and the intellectual maturity to observe facts with the critical spirit and to judge, to judge by the rule of reason. He considered that adhering to this ideal was necessary for his own age to become truly modern, truly humanized and civilized. Arnold's Poetry Arnold's poetry is mainly written to express emotions. He believes that poetry should be the criticism of life and is supposed to be written to express philosophical implications. He also believes that happiness comes from within and that people should look within themselves the good while being resigned in acceptance of outward things and avoiding the frustrating turmoil of the world. According to Arnold, poetry interprets life by having moral profundity. To achieve this point, the poet must aim at high and excellent seriousness in all that he writes. This demand has two qualities. The first one is the choice of excellent actions. The poet must choose those which most powerfully appeal to the great primary human feelings. The second point, according to Arnold, is the grand style. It refers to the perfect of form, choice of words, drawing its, you see, force from the idea or the theme it conveys. The truth and seriousness, according to Arnold, in the matter and substance of the best poetry you see, is inseparable from the superiority of diction and movement marking its style and manner. Now let us give an introduction to the poem Dover Beach before we start reading and discussing the text. Published in the New Poems in 1867, Dover Beach is one of Matthew Arnold's notable poems. Many critics believe that Arnold wrote his best poetry in 1840s and 1850s, and that Dover Beach was actually composed during this earlier period, employing one of Arnold's associative metaphors between life and the sea. The poem contrasts the beauty of the moonlit seashore and, and angst the uncertainty of life. 
Arnold's ability to evoke feelings of isolation, loneliness, and fear of the future accounts for the power of the poem and the reason why scholars believe that it is one of the best works from the Victorian age. In fact, the poem reveals the loss of man's faith by the use of metaphor. The poet here compares faith to a sea that surrounds the world. The sea has its arm full tight, then it ebbs away with the music over the pebbles. The grating of the pebbles associates the eternal notes of sadness and grief. The poet intends to drag the, po the reader's attention that faith and religion is gradually passing away from their life. And they are, it is, you see, embodied just like the, ebb, the pebbles on the shore. The loss of faith causes the minds to be isolated in the border between belief and disbelief. When the poet hears the grating, the grating roar of pebbles of the sea, he is reminded of the melancholy, long-withstanding roar of faith as it retreats from the man's minds. Now before we start dealing with the poem, let us listen to this reading. Now, dear students, look at the poem and listen carefully. Matthew Arnold, 1822-1888 Dover Beach The sea is calm tonight. The tide is full. The moon lies fair upon the straits. On the French coast the light gleams and is gone. The cliffs of England stand glimmering and vast out in the tranquil bay. Come to the window, sweet is the night air. Only from the long line of spray where the sea meets the moon-blanched sand. Listen, you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling at their return up the high strand. Begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Sophocles long ago heard it on the Aegean, and it brought into his mind the turbid ebb and flow of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought, hearing it by this distant northern sea. The sea of faith was once too at the full, and round earth's shore lay like the folds of a bright girdle furled. But now, I only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar, retreating to the breath of the night wind, down the vast edges drear and naked shingles of the world. Our love, let us be true to one another. For the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new, hath really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor help but pain. And we are here as on a darkling plain, swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight, where ignorant armies clash by night. Now we have listened to the poem. Now let us summarize the poem in brief and then start, you see, reading and discussing the poem stanza by stanza. The poem opens on a naturalistic scene. The speaker stands on the cliffs of Dover Beach, gazing at the majesty of nature. Sadness creeps in. And the speaker is reminded of how recent scientific discoveries have forever changed how humans relate to nature. This brings science and faith into conflict. The poem ends on a dark note, stating that there is no joy or love or light and that all the theology and scientific theory in the world can't 
make life meaningful if there is no love. Now in the first stanza, this stanza opens with the description of the sea and the effect of light. The poet calls on his friend to share the sweetness and tranquility of the light of the night air. In this stanza, you see the poet is supposed to be the speaker himself in the poem. As he does so, he is conscious of the grating roar, a harsh sound which disturbs the peace. The stanza ends with a note of eternal sadness that is still and the music of humanity disturbs the calmness of mind and the spirit as much as the calm bay. In the second stanza, the poet refers to the ancient times when Sophocles hear the same sound of the pebbles on the shore. It brings to his mind the ebb and the flow of human misery. Here, this allusion to Sophocles and the Greek, the Greek dramatist adds a historical element to the poem. Arnold quotes from, you see, the old the ancient Greek play entitled Antigone, when you see Sophocles refers to the same you see uh, place when he hears the ebb and flow of the pebbles and you see also recalls the misery of humans at that time. I you see shall call the original lines from Sophocles Antigone. Happy are they those life has not tasted evils but for those whose house has been shaken by God. No mass of ruin fails to creep upon their families. It is like the sea swell when an undersea darkness drives upon its wing gusts of the, the, uh, Thracian, Thracian wind. It rolls the dark sand from the depths and the beaches beaten by the waves and wind groan and roar. Here is the original you see lines from uh, a Greek play, uh, Antigone, written by the dramatist Sophocles. Here is, you see, an, uh, a historical reference, an allusion to uh, this uh, play because uh, this situation uh, uh, coincides uh, with the uh, uh, main theme of the poem. Uh, it means uh, the loss of faith. It refers to human misery, but the, its source in this poem is the loss of faith and religion in the Victorian society. Now we get back to the stanza. The tide becomes a metaphor for human misery. It comes in and goes out, bringing with it all the detritus, all the beauty and power contained in a human, in a human life. In his play entitled Antigone, Sophocles expressed this thought the same thought as Arnold's. Now Arnold hears the sound of Dover Beach and realized it in the same thought. It is the human misery. But according to Arnold, its source is the loss of faith in the Victorian society because mainly, fundamentally, the conflict between science, scientific discoveries, and religion. In the third stanza, the sea of faith, Human faith, the religious faith and the faith in fellow people covers the earth like the seawater. It was at its fullest, the tide is now. This vivid comparison brings to mind that it is not loose but the tightly attached to this world. It was a time when faith made everything easy and overwhelmed many obstacles and difficulties in human life. It also made people united and brought meaning to life. In this stanza, the speaker realized that those days are now past. Faith is lost now from the society, I mean the Victorian society, just like the waves is from the shore. He hears the sorrowful roar of the retreating steps of faith with the receding tides. In this stanza, the poet draws a horrible picture of the underlying darkness of the colorful modern world. In this stanza, 
The speaker goes back to the beginning to those tranquil images, the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so new. Now it is not only of that. The speaker then portrays the true reality of his time. The world had really neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude, nor peace, nor health or pain. So the speaker turns to his beloved and asks her to be faithful to each other. The dreamy world which looks so beautiful is not actually a source of love, joy and help for pain to the speaker. The miserable world does not mitigate the speaker's pain because it lost or the, lo the faith was lost in it. It means that the Victorian society uh, becomes life in this society becomes meaningless because you know uh, faith was gradually lost from the thoughts of the Victorian people and you see that because of all these changes but we said mainly because of the conflict between the scientific discoveries and achievements and religion including Darwin's theory as he wrote in his uh, uh, Origins of Species at the very end of the poem the speaker compares this world to a dark place where people are unaware about what they are doing. They are in struggle just like soldiers who are you see, fighting for no issues or rights. The poet ends the poem with this image through which he you see, assesses the morality and spirituality uh, you see, of the Victorian a world which is, you see, totally corrupted. This is a brief, you see, uh, but intensive analysis of uh, Arnold's Dover Beach. I shall ask you, dear students, to read another poem, as it is found in the textbook. It is entitled Human Life. It shares the same theme of this poem. I shall give you a brief introduction, and I shall ask you to present yourself about this poem. Thank you very much.